Here's my mouth quivering for some of that fun ice cream. So this is the movie Claudine. We're going to read a little bit about the uh, man in the house. She has six children. Claudine is on welfare. And this man, um, who's played by James Earl Jones, is courting her. He wants to get to know her, quote unquote. It's the bell. I don't hear no bell. What bell? Did you hear a bell? No, I didn't hear nothing. Francis with the ice cream. So this is clearly the effects. We have rules and then we have effects. This is clearly the effects of the man in the house rule, the expectations, the fear of being cut off, the desire to have a man, even and in this case, but still not willing to risk being financially destabilized. And so this is what we see happening in the scene. Well, don't just stand there, honey. Let her in. Hi, Miss Hi, kid. Uh, hi, you, Miss Kavak. Hi. Like I said before, they, they, they just used to pop up. They don't give you any warning. They don't set any appointments. They just pop up over at your house. And they, they you know, this is panic, anxiety. Everything is going on. How are you, Mrs. Oh, sorry, lying. <laughs> Oh, just fine, fine. But, uh, you know, they haven't sent me the authorization to buy the food stamps for the past six months. And then they cut me off for non-purchase. Now, Miss Kayback, why do they keep messing with me all the time? Ah, oh, the system's one big screw -up. Well, I'm glad to hear you say it, because no one... So you're the gentleman that's been keeping company here. Oh, no, ma'am, I'm just a garbage man. Oh, let me Sorry, so they had spies. They had people reporting. This movie is illustrating all this stuff. They had people spying on one another, um, police, people reporting. I see a man going into the house so that they can, as she's complaining, she's not getting her benefits. She's, she's being cut off. Um, this is at the time when you had the paper food stamps. And so now the social worker is like, aha, we found you had to hide your TV, anything that you, you bought because you're not supposed to have anything, right? A name, please. Simpson. First name? That's my first name. Oh, your surname? X. Simpson X what? Simpson X, that's it. You've heard of Malcolm X, I'm Simpson X. Hey, say, listen, I want to ask you something. You're supposed to give 80 to the dependent children, right? Well, why don't you just go ahead and give 80 to the dependent children instead of worrying about who the mother's keeping company with? Oh, let me straighten you out on something, Mr. X. There was a time we'd ask to use a bathroom to see if there was a razor in the cabinet. We don't do that anymore, but we do have to know what's going on. Do you live here or... <laughs> this movie is putting it all in there for you. There was a time that we used to... I used ask to use the bathroom to see if there was a razor. His question is, if you're here for dependent children and giving aid... Why not just do that? And actually, the I believe it was four children down south sued um, 
that the law, man in the house law was unconstitutional. We'll have to come back and talk about that. They sued uh, that it was unconstitutional and won. I forgot their names at this time, but we'll come back and talk about that. So he's that's what he's alluding to. We are back. Study examines man in the house, rules in the voucher program. And we're back again. This is Noteworthy. My name is Amuna. And we're going to go up quickly over, just peruse over some things to put a little something else in our pocket while we're talking about how welfare affected the melanated family and what really happened. Because oftentimes what the government may have done is put on the woman, I'm just going to say it, because she seemed to be the beneficiary of what was happening. And it makes the man oftentimes feels less than, based on what I'm hearing, because of the economic constraints that was put on him at that time. And so he has to put that energy somewhere, and oftentimes the woman gets the brunt of it. So this was written back in August of 2020. A new article by Rahim Kura, The Man in the House Rules, How the Regulation of Housing Voucher Turns Personal Bonds into Eviction Liabilities, explores the impacts of families, of regulations in the housing choice voucher program. The article published in Housing Policy Debate finds rules in HCV program resemble past and present punitive regulations in other housing and safety net programs, such as regulations or such regulations can create dilemmas, dilemmas for recipients in which they must choose between housing security and family. A long paternalistic history of punitive regulations has dodged social welfare policy. A classic example of this is the man in the house rule enforced throughout the 1960s. I was reading and it was in the beginning of the 60s before this melanated people didn't really have access to welfare. And the minute they did have access to welfare, they've started to put these strong rules in place to kind of force the family apart. Not kind of to force the family apart, including those in public housing. Man in the house rules sought to enforce social norms about who was morally deserving of welfare. Specifically, the rules presented, or sorry, prevented adult males from residing with mothers and children who received assistance. I asked the question, let me keep going. The rules sought to ensure only women with children who at the time were expected not to work benefited from welfare. Households with an adult male were viewed as undeserving of assistance because adult males were expected to provide for their families through work. Man in the house rules enforced through highly evasive inspections forced many families to choose between maintaining welfare support and keeping their families intact. Kuro's article extends historical analysis of such punitive regulations into the present by examining policies in the HVC program. Kuro's analysis draws a qualitative interview with 39 black voucher holders over a five-year period in Antelope Valley, a suburb in Los Angeles. The interviews document the experiences of voucher tenants and how program rules impacted their personal family and social lives. Three-fourths of the interviewers were women and the other four-fifths were black. What I'm going to do is jump over. I'm going to click the link and I'm going to come right back because I'll turn it around. But within this article, I'll link it below. Um, they have, it's a, it's a decent little read. It's a decent little read. But um, they have the little outtakes. It says in one of these here, I know two friends of mine that were incarcerated because extra people they're in their house and they got incarcerated. You know, I'm not saying the housing authority weren't right, but I'm just saying the author acts, they got incarcerated for it, not just taken away, not just their voucher taken away. No, not the voucher taken away. I guess they had extra. I guess they was being investigated for a long time, you know, not saying they were right, you know, having extra people live there, but sometimes the economy is bad and you have to do what you have to do. Not saying breaking the law. So this, when they talk about invasion, they had people during that time, they had police who would come, they would invade the property, you had um, stings, you know, you had all kind of stuff that was happening. The movie we're going to talk about, I had talked about it before some years ago, but we're going to go back and look at that movie Claudine, because that movie Claudine illustrates the no man in the house rule that was happening, or man in the house rule. So we're going to go.
All right, this is the one I was looking for. Boy, this thing is tiny. I got to be all in the computer screen. It says, before we moved into Pruitt Ego, the welfare department came to our home. They called with my mother about moving into the housing project. But the stipulation was that my father could not be with us. They would put us into the housing project only if he left the state. Okay? Mother and father discussed and they decided that it was best for the 12 children for the father to leave the home. And that's how we got into the project. And that's from a woman named Jacqueline Williams. So when people are going back and broad brushing, they say, I'm one of your two nuance. Listen, it doesn't do justice to broad brush the situation. She wanted the man out the house and she kicked him out the house. And that like that was an easy decision to make, number one. There had to be something going on in the background where this male could not, for one reason or next, do what it took to sustain his household of 12 children. And she had to find the way, and this was the way, and this was the requirement if she went that way. And according to what Jacqueline Williams is saying, they, the mother and the father discussed and the father agreed. Was that an easy decision? No, not at all. There was even, this is somebody, Joyce Legner. There was even a night staff men who worked for the welfare department whose job was to go into the home of the welfare recipients and they searched to find if there was a man in the home. Sometimes men came back at night to be with their families. Some were found in the closets hiding. Put back on my glasses. Okay, this is from the article. It goes the article, so I'm not making it up. I like to cite my sources, y'all. Put my glasses back on. The new man in the house rules. How the regulation of the housing voucher turns person, no bonds, into eviction liabilities. So as we are revisiting these discussions and people, I keep saying it, we want to feel inclined to mix it up and make it sound like how we want so that it can put our conscience at ease. That's not fair. That's not just. It's disingenuous. I know it may be uncomfortable. I know we may have to rethink our positions. I know we may have to go back in there and adjust our rhetoric. But do history some service and some justice. Don't whitewash it. You know, just because you want to, in this case, villainize, villainize the so-called black woman. So in order to villainize, I'm just going to put everything on it. She the Azazel scapegoat. There's many things that the woman has done and continues to do. But we have to be honest and, and um looking at how things got to the position that they're in and the fact that it is definitely a snowball effect and um, we're never, not going to really get anywhere with the blame game. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thanks for bearing with me. That was some really, really small print. Uh, we'll come back again and have more conversations like these. Leave your thoughts in the box below. One.